Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. Cedric here in Antwerp with another brewery breakdown. Now, I already told you guys that I'll be tasting the Omer Brut Natur uh, 2020, the limited edition, the very first one tomorrow. And I will be giving away one of those bottles um, to celebrate crossing the 100 subscribers here on YouTube. So you probably figured out uh, which brewery we're gonna be breaking down today. <laughs> the story of Omer van der Ginste officially starts in 1892. And as you will have noticed in previous videos, the last two decades before the turn of the century were absolute heydays when it comes to starting breweries, mainly larger breweries. And many of those uh, are still known to us these days. Not always in existence, but we still know them. So in 1892, Remy van der Ginste buys a house with an adjacent brewery, be it rather small at the time, for his then 23-year-old son Omer in Belgium. Now, in said house, the previous owners had made beers since 1869, which was also the birth year of Omer, by the way. And Omer continued this tradition while uh, building a family brewery around it. Uh, they started with the uh, Auden Triple, which was actually not a triple, but a classic West Flanders Rode Brun. And after that became this one, still absolutely lovely. Now, I say family brewery, but the first few years were rather lonely as Omer worked uh, the complete brewery practically alone. <coughs> of course, there were no large volumes involved and they only delivered locally uh, as was the custom in those days um, and in this case uh, his horse-drawn carriage would actually cover an area of 15 kilometers around the brewery so a diameter of 30 kilometers um, a few years later Omer met Marguerite van Damme uh, also from a brewer's family because she was the granddaughter of Felix Verschuren who in turn was the owner and founder of uh, Maltri e Brasserie Le Fort. And this was actually the Kortrijk City Brewery founded by Felix in 1854 and named after the Kortrijk Citadel, uh, which is still there and was very close to the brewery. Of course, brewers and their families meeting each other was not rare in those days because they used to frequent the same places, the same events uh, by the Brewers Guild and all. And Omer and Marguerite lived less than 10 kilometers apart. Now, they seemed to get along quite fine. And shortly thereafter, they got married. Uh, meanwhile, Omer grew to become one of Flanders' first uh, genius marketeers, let's say. He was also a great artist. And he provided many local pubs with stained glass windows uh, with the text Bieden Omer van der Ginste. I'll put a picture up here somewhere. And these windows were so iconic for the brewery that they still use them today. And it is actually still their logo right here. Genius indeed, were it not that he included his first name. So when he and Marguerite uh, were expecting a son in 1901, Marguerite quickly decided to call the son Omer as well. Um, that way they didn't have to change the horribly expensive stained glass windows when the son would succeed the father later on. Now, since Omer wanted to honor his father as well, they settled on calling the young one Omer Remy. And to this day, every first son in the family got a double first name, including Omer. At first, of course, uh, to save a few pennies or a few bucks uh, for that very same reason. But later on, it became tradition uh, until today, apparently. Unfortunately, in 1911, both of Marguerite's parents, her uncles, her aunts, and her grandfather suddenly passed away. Now, I couldn't find records of this. But she and Omer inherited the Lafort Brewery. And this was, uh, well, this expansion was, was as huge as, as it was sudden, of course. And they decided to move all production to Belgium, to their own brewery, and repurpose the Kortrijk buildings uh, after renovations into administrative buildings and a bottling plant and some warehouses. 
In 1929, Omer kind of grew tired of brewing and he wanted to enjoy his, his well-deserved pension. So they actually tried to sell the brewery to Stella Artois, or uh, should I say Brewery de Horn, in Leuven. For some mysterious reason that I couldn't find out, the sale didn't go through. And so the time came for Omer Remy to take over from his then 60-year-old father. Of course, he's 28 by that time, so... He started heading the family brewery and in the early 1900s Pilsner beers became very popular. So Omer and me wanted to serve that wave as well. Now Pilsner is a low fermented beer and asks for a completely different approach than the high fermentation beers that they were already making. So in order to fund this project, uh, because they needed a lot of new gear, Marguerite sold off most of her assets, including what was left of the old Lafort brewery. They added a whole tower with uh, a cooling ship in Belgium, and they started making what they called Hinst Pils. Now, it didn't take long uh, before they changed a whole lot in the brewery, actually. And Mostly on the administrative side, uh, in, in 1931 the company changed to a different legal form, a legal status, and was called Grote Brouwerij Omer van der Ginste, or the, the large brewery Omer van der Ginste. And in 1934 they also renamed the Ginst Pils to Bocker Pils, after the German word Bock for beer and the French word Or for gold. So basically golden, peel, uh, golden beer or golden ale. Now this was their greatest seller for decades. And during that time, Omer Remy also got a son of his own. And you guessed it, um, he was called Omer II. Actually, to make things easier, he also called him Omer Remy, to be exact. In 1947, the brew house got a makeover too, and well, some brand new kettles with a capacity of 90,000 hectoliters per year were installed. And they were never used to maximum capacity, but they were there. Omer Remy II took over from his dad in 1961 and apparently uh, the tradition doesn't end with naming their firstborn son. Uh, it also includes having your firstborn son uh, because Omer Remy II also had his son within a few years after heading the brewery. Um, in 64, Omer Jean was born. Now, a new rain brings new ideas and Omer Remy II installed uh, new fermentation tanks, uh, modernized the brewery a bit further. Um, but another big change was the closure of the malt house, which was actually still in use. So in 1964, they closed that down. They tore it down and replaced it by um, some extra warehouses because the brewery grew. And again, they changed legal forms and now they could take on shareholders, being the family themselves, but nonetheless. Now, during this time, Omer Remy II innovated a lot more. So he expanded their beer portfolio, for example. During the 60s, Omer van der Ginste also distributed the Lambic beers by Kasteelbrouwerij van Honsebroek, which wasn't that far away from them. They distributed those beers in their own pubs and since they had the capacity and the know-how, they actually decided to start producing some similar beers uh, and pocket the money themselves. So in 1970, the Geuse Jacobin, named after the Rue de Jacobin in Paris, uh, where the original Omer stayed during World War I and, um, well, kind of like next to where he stayed, it was a 13th century cloister, long story. But van der Hinste bought a lambic wort of a brewery Havart in Asse and they blended the geus themselves. Now, more or less a decade later, the Krieg and Framboise Jacobin followed. A bit later on, they introduced the Cuvée de Jacobin, which was mainly for a US export. And in 2002, they developed a commercial sweet cherry beer called Creek Max, because at that time the Creek was very popular. In the meantime, in 1977, they renamed the brewery to Bokker after their flagship seller, the Bokker Pils. That happened quite often, of course. Now, 
In 2007, to make a jump, Omer Jean filled his father's seat and breaking tradition, he had already had a son in 1993. But to be fair, his dad stayed on much longer than his predecessors. So if Omer Remy II had switched places after 30 years instead of 46, they would have been right on schedule. Now, on the other hand, uh, Omer Jean started working in a brewery in the 90s as well. He just didn't get the CEO position for another 15 years. Nonetheless, with the start of Omer Jean's uh, reign, things changed again. Uh, for example, he started by discontinuing several beers with declining sales numbers, amongst which the whole Jacobin range. In 2008, he introduced the now so well-known Omer beer, the strong blonde. And it's kind of hard to believe that a beer that's so well-rooted in our horeca culture and, and in my opinion is a huge competitor for several century old ales, um, has only existed for 15 years. Uh, so yeah, props to them. In 2013, Van der Ginste also released the Lefort beer, followed by a triple Lefort, as a tribute to Marguerite van Damme's heritage and her saving the brewery. And eventually in 2014, the brewery was renamed again, and this time simply Omer van der Ginste, because they wanted to emphasize that familial character and the, that historical character. In 2018, the brewery underwent a huge facelift with a new brew house with a capacity of 180,000 hectoliters, uh, but they brew around 100,000, 120,000. And a new hospitality center, which still holds the beautiful copper kettles that were installed in 1947. Eventually, in 2019, Omer Géry joined the brewery's research and development center. And yeah, he developed some new beers. So finally, that brings us to the present day. In 2020, they announced a special anniversary beer involving uh, or revolving around the number five. Five generations of Omer and the number five comes back several times. But the important thing is that that beer was the very first thing created by Omer Géry. Now, I could go into detail about this beer, but of course I'm not because we're gonna talk about it tomorrow and have a tasting as well. So, let's round this up. Uh, if you guys want a chance to, to win, let's say, this bottle, or its brother, um, yeah, tune in tomorrow and I'll find some way of giving away this bottle. As usual, thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, let me know, hit the thumbs up. If you have any questions, remarks, uh, feel free, Put them down in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And yeah, I'd love to see you guys again tomorrow for another video, this time about Omer Brut Natuur. Cheers, you guys.